Welcome to Ask an Adaptive Horseback Riding Instructor. My name is Sabre Papoli. I'm the owner and founder of Hoof Falls and Foot Falls, where I provide free and affordable online education to instructors in the EAAT industry or Equine Assisted Activities and Therapies industry. And today we are going to be talking about stirrups. So I have been getting a lot of questions about stirrups and if I had a preferred stirrup of choice, I guess you could say, that I use in a lot of my lessons. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and talk about that. So I have a few different stirrup options here. I personally use um, dressage or all-purpose English saddles mostly in my lessons. Um, one, I feel like the dressage saddles um, give better alignment to the students. Usually the dressage and the all-purpose English saddles or close contact saddle are a little bit lighter than a Western saddle um, and that was is just the tack and equipment that I, I choose to use. A lot of these serfs that I'm going to be showing though can be used on Western saddles if you take the Western stirrup fender off and replace it with an English stirrup leather. Um, sometimes that's a little bit more friendly on someone's joints, um, knees and ankles uh, specifically. Sometimes it also impacts the hips as well. So these stirrups can be used on dressage saddles, English saddles, uh, Western saddles, trail or endurance type saddles. Um, so these are kind of the different options I have in my barn. So the first one we're going to talk about is the cage stirrup. Um, so the reason why I don't have a specific stirrup I go to all the time is because I use stirrups based on the needs of my participants, whether they are able-bodied or special needs. Um, each student has a unique need. So this is a cage stirrup. It is made out of plastic, lightweight. Um, the thing that I like about these is one, the foot cannot go through the stirrup, so this would meet safety stirrup requirements for most certifying organizations. For example, PATH International, um, CHA, uh, this is a safety stirrup and it's recommended use um, for individuals who are newer to riding and also who do not have appropriate riding footwear, so a smooth soled shoe with a heel to prevent feet from slipping through. Although even though if people ride in riding appropriate footwear until they have a lot more experience, I still like using safety stirrups just in case. Um, so with this plastic stirrup, the benefits, um, so I guess the upside of this choice would be that it's super light. So this would be really good for a younger rider who has a smaller foot, uh, maybe not as much leg strength or joint strength. Um, so that's a benefit of that. This would also be really good for someone who maybe has just overall low strength or maybe sensitive joints, um, whether or not they're a child or an adult. The downside to this sometimes is that um, when the foot goes in, for some reason, some riders' brains have the desire to kind of hold that foot into the stirrup where they put the toe of their stirrup all the way in and then they end up riding more of a heel up, toe down because they're trying to push that toe in there. Um, I've had riders ride in a traditional stirrup or a peacock stirrup, which we'll talk about in a minute, and switch to these. And it was a rider who used to have very good either neutral or slight heel down position. And when they rode in these, they had heel up, um, even though we were working through it and they were very aware of, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I just can't get past it. So that is a potential downside. Um, one more thing that could be a pro or a con is that um, these stirrups provide a very big base for the foot. Sometimes that stability could be really good for riders. Um, sometimes that's too much of a platform and again they feel like they can't put that heel down and it feels like they're trying to step into that platform area. So um, this bigger bottom could be a good or a bad. So this is choice one is your cage stirrup. Um, again lightweight plastic. The second stirrup I'm going to show you is your traditional peacock stirrup. This is a youth size one. Um, we have the rubber tread inside. I personally like keeping the rubber tread in here because it prevents shoes from slipping out. Um, some people like to remove this because they're worried about shoes getting stuck in here, especially if someone is riding with a sneaker or some type of a shoe that has a little bit more tread. Um, however, 
I would challenge you to ride in a stirrup without this rubber tread in there um, with or without riding appropriate shoes. If you don't have riding appropriate shoes on, make sure it's a safety stirrup. But feel how difficult it is to ride when you don't have this rubber tread in there. It's a slick metal and you usually lose your footing in the stirrup. Um, so I personally leave these in if I use a peacock stirrup. Upside of these, um, if a rider does not do well in this stirrup and they like to try to shove their foot all the way in, usually a peacock stirrup works well um, for the student. Um, also safety, this would be a safety stirrup if the rubber is pointed to the outside. I have a whole video on appropriate uses or um, the appropriate way to use a safety stirrup or a peacock stirrup. So make sure you check that video out and I go into more detail about um, how and why we should use these correctly so they actually are a safety stirrup. So um, downside of these, if they're made out of metal, they can be a little heavy, especially for little kids. And you also want to make sure that the stirrup is appropriate to size for the individual, making sure that the stirrup is not too small and touching and squeezing the sides of the shoes, um, but also that it's not too big because too big of a stirrup can cause issues as well. Um, another downside to this is the hooks that are on the side. I mentioned this in the video I did on um, proper and safe use of peacock stirrups, but these hooks can get caught on the rider when they dismount if you don't move your stirrup out of the way. And also for those of us that do adaptive or, or therapeutic horseback riding lessons and we use volunteers, these can get hung up on our volunteers as well. So that's just something to look out for. But I use these all the time, just like I use these all the time. All right, third option we have is our S stirrup. Again, if used appropriately and the S is left to the outside and facing the correct direction, this would also be a safety stirrup because the foot would be able to fall out of it in the case of an emergency. Um, these I like because they are a little bit more stable and they don't flex like these if I were to buy the peacock stirrup in an adult size. Um, usually the bigger these get, the weaker this metal kind of seems to be, and sometimes the platform tilts down. So for more adult size safety stirrups, I prefer the S stirrup. Um, if you're going to go with one of the two metal ones and a plastic cage stirrup is not a good fit for your student. Um, pros to this, safety stirrup, so you have a lot more footing um, options available or footwear options available. Again, I leave the rubber tread in um, for the stirrup. Downside, these are heavy because it's solid metal all the way around. It's not even like you're missing a chunk of it like you would in the peacock stirrup. Um, so these are heavy. They can cause additional stress on ankles and knees and hips, um, but these are a good safety stirrup alternative or safety stirrup option. Sorry, not alternative. Um, I use these mostly with adult riders or like teens that have larger feet. These are a good fit. It's not on a syrup leather just because I have a limited number of syrup leathers and I happen to have my personal syrups on the syrup leather I usually put this one on. Um, so other option, this right here, this is like a flexi bendy iron syrup. Um, I love these, however these are not a safety syrup. So, I personally ride in these because I have um, several years of experience riding, lifetime of it, and I know how to safely kick my foot out in an emergency, um, and I'm very, very aware of the safety risks involved if I ride in a stirrup that is not a safety stirrup. I also wear appropriate footwear when I'm riding in the stirrup. Um, I personally like this flexi iron because when you ride, it bends and it gives a little bit. Um, I have really bad back and knee and ankle issues um, already, and I'm sure it'll just get worse as I age, uh, but these really, really help the comfort um, when I'm, of my joints when I'm riding, especially in uh, when I'm out doing trails or longer rides on the horses. So I love these flexi irons. Um, with some of my more advanced adult riders, because these are adult sized, who have been riding a while. They know how to drop stirrups appropriately, when to drop it. They have a really good seat. Um, they're able to read the horse. They're aware of the safety risks involved with using um, non-safety stirrups and they're riding in appropriate footwear. I will let some of my students use these if it is appropriate. 
Um, so those are my four syrup options that I kind of choose from. Uh, like I said, if it is on a different type of saddle other than a dressage or an English saddle, like a Western, you could take off that sir the Western syrup fender, put an English syrup leather on, and then this could be a good option, um, or any of these syrups really could be a good option depending on the size of your student, the ability level of your student, and also um, how their body reacts to the different types of stirrups. So I would encourage you to put a student in a stirrup that is safe and appropriate to that student, try it out, see what you're seeing, and then go from there. Try swapping it if you need to and um, play around with stirrups until you find something that works for them and get their feedback, feedback ask how they're feeling, um, ask what it's like, ask which one they prefer and why, um, and you might learn some really cool things from your student.